what's up youtube family thanks again for tuning in i really appreciate it if this is the first time to the channel make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so when i drop a video like this you get notified without further ado let's jump straight to today's video all right let me take the time to give a special shout out to all of my new subscribers welcome to the family if you guys support what i do don't hesitate to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel as well so let's get to the video you guys know how excited I am to share the completion of the pig bone with you. I have been talking about this for the longest time and we are finally here. I share with you part one and this is part two of the pig bone completion. So you guys know this has been a long journey and the excitement that I got from it is uncomparable. So the biggest struggle now that I have to deal with is how am I gonna manage this? Now, where do we go from here? Okay, now it's freaking me out. The project is done, now I am unstoppable. The pigs can multiply as fast as they possibly can. Now, it is my responsibility to make sure that when that growth starts to occur, I can control them and make sure that the pig feeds are available at every single time which means that I need an activity to take place within the farm so that all of this is possible. But I know I can pull it off because I already got things that I've planned. Now that I'm flying to Kinshasa next month, which I am going, I'm going to share the date, the exact date with you in a separate video. But for now, all you need to know, April, I'll be in Kinshasa. So you let me know in the comment section down below what's the date exactly. I will really appreciate it. Okay, guys, so you know, Farming in Congo, Kinshasa is something that I've been talking about in, on my channel for over almost two years now. So, and I am going to continue to talk about it. This farm is just getting started. So you guys have to expect a lot more from this farm. You know, again, I've discussed the borehole. I have discussed the poultry farming and stuff like that. All of that will come with a price. So I still got a lot more to spend on the farm, but probably the biggest expense that I have poured into this project so far is probably this big barn. As this video is being recorded, I will not be able to give you the exact amount, but if I have to guess, the estimate was probably between 5,500 to 6,000 US dollars. But I ended up spending almost close to 10,000 US dollars just because you think about it, every single step of the construction require a payment so the mason will charge you for the foundation they will charge you for the elevation they will charge you for paving they will charge you for roofing all of that other stuff so if you decide to stick with the same uh, person the same guy that you've hired from the beginning if you are very happy with the quality of work that they're putting onto your farm so you get to pay them every step of the way so you know they also have the team that they have to bring out that is under their responsibility so the money that you pay them is going to use that money to pay his um helpers too so that's kind of how it works i was very excited and actually happy with the results that I was getting from this particular guy that's why I stuck with him so I didn't fire anybody so I worked with them from the beginning towards the end and I was very excited with the quality of work that they put uh, to this completion of the barn so far there are some irregularities that has nothing to do with the performance of the mason however so sometimes that's why I always I'll tell you guys that if you are planning to do a project in Congo, if you have time and if you have uh, money to spend or if you got some vacation time from your job, do not hesitate to fly there to make sure everything runs smoothly. Because the problem about that is that you have a vision that they don't have. So you kind of have to explain and let people know what you exactly need done in your farm or whatever business that you are trying to do. because nobody else has the vision you have unless if you communicate that with people that's why it's very important that you're there 
on the ground when everything is getting done. So that's something that I wish I would have done, but it wasn't that I didn't want to do it. It was because of my situation with my job that I explained uh, in a previous video. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'm going to link it in the description up here so you guys can go back and check it out so you can understand the reason why I wasn't able to go there when the construction was taking place. All right. But the, the most the things that I am most I'm the happiest about is the fact that I wasn't there, but these guys and my team was able to pull off this quality work without me being there. I was sending money and I put my trust into them and they never disappointed me. So they did exactly what was supposed to to, to be done and the estimate did not go over. And actually some of the stuff, you know, like that were I mean the prices that were on the estimate some of the products or materials were actually cheaper than that and every single time that happened my brother will call me and let me know uh, what was going on I'm sorry guys I have to put my hands in my pockets to keep them warm a little bit because it's getting cold out here that's one of the reasons why I have to travel to Kinshasa next month because I hate the cold I hate the cold weather listen if I had the money or the ability to fly back to Congo during winter time i would do it every year but unfortunately this year i wasn't able to do so because of the reasons that i explained on a previous video all right so that's right there but i'm so excited that next month we're going to be on the ground and i'm going to walk with you through the entire process so now that we have the pig here the pigs are not ready to move in so now we have them and what's gonna happen after this well you need to stay tuned to watch this to see these videos you see the direction the path this channel is going to take because my goal is to show you and to show that there's more than what you can see here we can do a lot more in farming in congo there was tons of opportunity that we're all missing out on by just sitting around and talking about what we want to do it's not only enough what's very important is to make sure that we go there on the ground take actions because actions speak louder than words sitting back and talking it, it, it's amazing to tell what you think it sounds amazing to share your ideas but usually when you f up against the reality all the thoughts just disappear from your head all right so instead of just talking about it why not just take actions go do you know be about it and that's exactly what i'm doing and i don't want you to stay behind i don't want you to just get too comfortable and not do anything about it another thing that we have to keep in mind is the country where we come from the democratic republic of congo is a country that need more of us in a diaspora to come back home to start investment those investments are very crucial for the local population for this new generation these new guys they have people to look up to they don't always have to you know go to school graduate high school or go to college and then eventually you ask them what do you want to do with your life or i want to go to europe i'm going to want i want to i want to go to america with all the potentials that we have in congo and if we really point people in the right direction people would never want to move here to the west i am going to do a little bit of the math even if i suck at it but i'll try the best that i can so you guys can get an idea how much money you can make farming let me just focus on pig farming for instance all right i have built a pig barn that has the capacity to accommodate about 100 pigs all right so if you have 100 pigs that weigh 75 pounds at least because i'm going to go by the weight and the price that i sold one of my pigs you know a while back it weighed 75 pounds all right but they paid me 325 dollars for it so that 300 dollars 25 uh 25 325 dollars times 100 so you're looking at close to like close to like maybe like close to forty thousand dollars right there so think about it this way you have forty thousand dollars laying around because you got 100 pigs on your farm with the one is structured so god forbid all right you just sell 20 of them you have something like six thousand dollars or a little bit more which could give you the ability to build another structure 
thus increasing the production. You can have another structure if you have 100 pigs. You know what I'm saying? And let's just say in the local level you have med connections and you talk to people with all the bars and nightclubs around the town because it's becoming more touristic place when a lot of people go there they go to bars and most bars at least they have like a little corner where people sell pigs or or goats or whatever the case may be and these people those pigs they come from somewhere they come from this uh, local farmer you know what i mean those local farmers are the ones that are providing the services to them and if you can make a deal and talk to them and be like hey i'll give you a discount if you at least purchase five pigs every week because you sell them to the local market the markets kind of bump up the price to them but the price there's not really that much of a difference there so if they're buying five pigs every week that amounts up to almost close to two thousand dollars every week so can you imagine with a pig barn that costs about that much and if you have the right breeds of pigs that you're growing you're raising on your farm you could be making close to two thousand dollars every week as long as you come up with a strategy to just to keep the farm going and how many of us here in the west we have jobs that pay you as much money as that you'll probably need a bachelor's degree and it also depends on the field because not everybody with a bachelor's degree make that good money either you know what I'm saying? So I know a lot of people here in the West that work at warehouses and many different places like that. They barely make $800 a week. But you could be in Africa making a whole lot, than, a lot more than that. But you don't even need that much money to survive in Kinshasa. But that's an idea to telling you that you could get way much better than you think you're worth. Staying here in the West is never going to get you there. Staying here, it's only going to take you from one job to another and another and another for the next 20, 25, even 30 years. And nothing is going to happen. So that's why I'm always advocating for the African youth to going back to the home country, start investments. And the reason is these type of opportunities which you are never going to get anywhere else but in africa so get involved never let anybody tell you how bad or how messed up africa is because i believe every country in the world have their issues every country in the world have their problems the issues that we have those are the problems that we can fix on our own in the west there are tons of problems too that they got to work on so there is no country here in, the, in this world that is perfect but if you figure out a way to make things work for you that, and you're comfortable with that type of environment that's a done deal you remain there don't let anybody tell you what's best or what's not best for you. Because me, the, life, the Western lifestyle, I've gotten sick of it. I'm ready to move back in my country. That's why I'm putting everything in place. Do whatever it takes to make sure that when I move there, I never want to come back here. Maybe only to visit friends and family and things like that. If it just was, it depend on me, I'll probably just stay there. But I'll guarantee you one thing, if I go and talk to my family, tell them the idea of me moving back home they probably think I'm about to go crazy but they don't understand what my vision is and I don't always have to tell them what I'm up to when I'm there in Congo I can be taking care of my business and minding my own business without them knowing exactly what I'm doing yes they know I'm building a barn or whatever I'm doing things on my farm but in their mind they don't think that I'm doing that because I actually want to move back because what I'm doing is best for me and I believe it's going to benefit not only me but the Congolese youth. You know, that's why I'm encouraging, I'm encouraging everybody that are here in the diaspora who has some type of business mindset or entrepreneurial mindsets to go back home to start the investment because the market is there. The only thing you need is just to strategize what you really need to do. Come up with brilliant ideas that would make you stand out more than anybody else that's on the same field you just do things differently remember in his previous video where i discussed the ceremony that took place uh, you know that you know the elected chief is through a little ceremony after me completing this project which went behind by mine and i can't wait to meet him when i fly over there next month those are the things that should that that shows that okay you're doing something 
you take it for granted, but other people around you, they see the value in it. You know what I mean? That's kind of like exactly what happened. So we all sometimes, it makes us feel better to get some type of reward, some type of recognition for something that you have accomplished. And for me, for the very first time being able to accomplish this, it really makes me feel proud. It really makes me feel that there is still hope that we could uplift our young Congolese that are still sleeping. This is another opportunity to prove to people that there is a lot more in Congo than what the media tell us. Yes, the infrastructure isn't there. There are a lot of things that the country needs to work on. The government's got to do a better job. But that's, that still shouldn't be an excuse to keep you away from Congo. You go there, do whatever it takes, do whatever you can to change things. Because it's not one individual that's going to change everything. It takes a group. It takes a collective effort. So you do A, I do B, and another person do Z. That's how you build the country. All right? So, hey, guys, I just wanted you to see what I have done so far with my farm. And please wish me luck because there is a lot more that needs to be done around this farm. This is just the beginning. Thank you guys again for tuning in. I really appreciate your engagement. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Until the next one, actually, hold on. There is a lot, one more video that I am very excited to share with you guys because you know from the look of it, what the farm is looking like, there's so much weed or whatever, weed control must take place. And I already got a video about that because I am going to plant way more trees that you guys can see here on this farm because I want to create a forest inside this farm, which I talked about, but I never got a chance to do it. Now the opportunity has presented itself. I am going to do it. So keep an eye out on that video. I'm going to release it really, really soon. I'm not sure yet because I'm trying to accommodate everything between trying to like purchase things and organize my trip to Kinshasa next month and keeping up with work. At the same time, you know, uh, releasing YouTube videos is a lot. That's why I want to eliminate things that I believe are necessary in my life just so I can focus on one thing. And that one thing, it is farming in Congo, Kinshasa. So if you agree with that idea, smash the subscribe button, smash the bell for more videos like this. And also don't forget to share the video with a friend. Until the next video, I'll see you guys later. Peace.